this is not a video where I'm going to be telling you to quit your job. This also is not a video where I am going to tell you that there was a happy ending after I quit my job. And this certainly isn't a video where I am going to tell you at the end of the video that I am going to be going all in on YouTube and making videos 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, so that I can become a YouTube millionaire. I want to have this conversation to talk about exactly what the title says, being over 50 years old and quitting a job. In January of 2024, I left my job that I had been at for seven years, and that decision was very well thought out. I had an extremely supportive boss who we had talked about that. Um, what that would look like for the both of us. And as the time came near, he did everything that he could to get me into what he thought was a similar working environment as to what he had provided for me, right? Well, that was not the case. And after... Having been on that job, I'm going to say maybe three weeks, no longer than a month, I quit. My philosophy about jobs is this, and yours may differ, but my philosophy about jobs is this. Jobs are a business transaction. That transaction should be mutually beneficial to the employer as well as to the employee, but the employee will never come out on the winning end of that transaction. I don't care how good your boss may be. I don't care how flexible your job may be. Corporate America and jobs are not designed that way. And so for me, what I've learned over the course of these years from having worked in many, many, many different fields, what I have learned is this. Some things are more important to me than others. I value my time. I value flexibility. And I value respect. I live a very lean life, right? Meaning I don't have a lot of expenses. So with that, I don't have to necessarily go into a job looking at money first. Time freedom is what's important to me. So when I got into this new role, that was one where if I had just stayed in that position for one year, it would have positioned me to go out and get another job making a lot more money and also having that time freedom that means so much to me but it just didn't work out that way i saw the signs early on the red flags were on fire i went from being able to clock out of my work per se as a salaried um, employee i went from being able to clock out and not have to worry about work until I clocked in the next day. There would be occasional things that I would have to do or that I chose to do, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't required. And a lot of times the things that I chose to do was because I had such a great boss and he made, he made me want to do those things because of the type of leader that he was. And so when you hear people say that they don't necessarily um, quit jobs, they leave bad bosses, I can be a witness to that, honey, over and over and over again. So when I got into this new role and um, I was having anxiety about picking up my own personal phone because the boundaries had been just completely disregarded in that short three week to maybe one month time frame that I had been working there. 
the boundaries had just been completely um, trashed, just boundaries did not exist. And so I am using my personal phone that I am not being reimbursed for um, to get on team calls um, with no notice, like like really with with no notice, um, eight, nine, maybe even as late as 10 o'clock at night. I am receiving text messages at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, um, being told that I needed to give my personal cell phone number to external entities who may need to reach me at any hour of the day or day or night. And I was expected to answer those calls. Um, that number one was not what I signed up for. So there was a complete bait and switch, in my opinion. And number two, having seen that that's what was required, I automatically knew that was just not the gig for me. I ended up having to have three days of medical leave in order to try to literally catch my breath. I'm not exaggerating. Um, my blood pressure was through the roof. I was having chest pains. I was dizzy. I was having shortness of breath. When I had to have a doctor intervene and say, I need for you to sit down and rest for these three days, for these three days, I need for you to sit down and rest. Um, I knew that a decision had to had to be made. And even prior to then, even in just that short period of time, I had already told myself I am taking this one day at a time. And you may think that I am exaggerating with just like how short of a time period this employment lasted um, and just how stressful um, it was. I am telling you, I am not making any of this up. So I had the doctor tell me, I need for you to sit down those three days um, gave me some time at the end of the week and some time over the weekend. And I had made up my mind that Sunday night before I was to go back to work um, that Monday, I'd made up my mind that Sunday night. And I said, I will make a decision on how long I'm going to continue to do this based on what I wake up to right that Monday morning. And lo and behold, when I logged on to my email after having been off for three days with a doctor's note, with a medical leave, when I woke up to my email that Monday morning and the person that I was working for had sent me emails at two and three o'clock in the morning, only because they knew my phone was off limits. I knew that day was going to be my last day. I quit with no notice. I did offer to give the customary two weeks notice from that date um, and continue to work for the next two weeks. That was declined. I didn't worry about burning any bridges, you know, all of those things that we were told, oh, don't burn any bridges. You never know when you may have to go back. Uh, I'm not doubling back. I'm not spinning the block back over there. I did not have a solid backup plan, but what I did have was some great relationships that I had formed during those seven years that I had been at my previous job. The other thing that I had was still the unwavering, unconditional support of my boss. And with those two things, I knew that I would land somewhere. I didn't know what that was going to look like, but I knew that within a matter of time, um, I would get another job. So I did have, you know, about three months of living expenses that I could live off of. Turned out that I was unemployed for mm, about a month, I'm going to say about a month, maybe a month and a couple of weeks. In March of 2024, I accepted an offer and I started working again. This is just another business transaction for me. I show up, I do the work. In exchange for that work, I get a paycheck.
this is not the first time that I have been in a situation where I had just a horrible working experience. Another time was in around 2008. And I, every Sunday, I would literally get physically sick because I knew the next day I had to go to this place that I absolutely hated. And I remember standing in my closet one Sunday evening, getting my clothes ready for the week, because that was one of the things that I did to try to make things easier for me. So I remember standing in the closet on that Sunday, trying to get my things ready for the week. And I just remember saying out loud, I don't know how this is going to end, but I'm ready for it to be over. And by that Thursday, <laughs> I got fired. And I remember, as I think back about that, I remember having the mindset of, I'm not going to quit. Nobody's going to make me quit. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tough this out. And I remember after that experience, telling myself, um, there's a big difference between quitting and knowing when it's time to let go. And from that experience, I vowed going forward that I would never allow myself to be in that type of situation again to where I felt like I was doing something heroic by putting myself in a situation that did not make me feel good just because I needed a paycheck. This is the part where I tell you about me having always had something else to depend on financially and fall back on probably since around 2005 or 2006. When I made this video right here talking about living paycheck to paycheck, I didn't talk about this because it wasn't relevant to that particular topic. Um, but since about 2005, 2006, I have done paid public speaking as well as business strategy for small businesses. And that has always been a good source of additional income for me. It was just that the job that I was on for those seven years, it presented a conflict of interest. And so I could no longer pursue those endeavors, right? But where I am now, I can do those things without there being any type of conflict. And so those are the things that I'm starting to pursue and work on again. With having such a diverse background and, and skill set, I have been able to take the things that I have learned on the job, as well as things that I have taken the time to teach myself. I've been able to take those things and transition that into a way that I can go out and earn money. Because I keep things very lean at home with my personal finances, I also do the same thing with my business finances. Picking up and getting started again with speaking and consulting, that takes little to no money at all. And the same thing goes for my time. I've been able to do this um, over the course of these years because I have a very narrow focus. I am not all over the place. Again, chasing all of the trends, trying to be on all of the social media platforms. I really hone in on doing the work that's going to move the needle forward and make me the most money. So in 2017 or 2018, I created this handy dandy little guide um, that talks about, I think it's about three things, three focus areas that I focus on um, while I'm working my full time job, as well as pursuing my endeavors on the side. And I created that little guide and I used it initially as a way to build my email list. Right. But I have since today, I have changed that to where it's just completely, completely free. If you would like to see it, 
you can go and click the link um, down in the description box, or I, I might pin a comment, but look down in the description box. If you care to look at that guide, um, go take a look at it. It's completely free. You do not have to give me your email address. I also made a companion video to kind of elaborate on it because it's, it's a very short guide. And I made it for that reason, because again, not taking up a lot of people's time to be able to give them information that they can use and immediately go out and get themselves, um, a quick win. So you can get that guide if you're interested down in the description box. And if you missed the video where I was talking about where I'm going to be transitioning into talking about more business related topics, this is the follow up video to that. But I wanted to provide you some some what I think is very, very important context as to how I got here um, and then to speak to just my credibility and my experiences so that you have some insight as to the other person on the other side of the camera who you're choosing to listen to. If you are one of my loyal, longtime viewers, I appreciate you for always coming back. If for, for whatever reason you've never seen me before and YouTube has decided to put this video on your homepage, thank you for clicking and watching. It is time, the time is now, and I'm ready.